Chapter 2 Julian If there was a record for how long you could carry a torch for the wrong person, I thought for sure I'd be appearing in the Guinness Book any day now. Parker Ellis was the man everyone wanted. It had been that way my whole life. When we were seven, the t-ball coach wanted him on the team. Julian, ask your friend Parker if his parents want to sign him up. When we were 13, the girls playing chicken in the neighborhood pool all wanted him to be their partner because he was already taller than the rest of us. When we were 16, they wanted him between their legs for a different reason, and their parents wanted him cutting their lawn since he'd do it for cheap. When we were almost 17, our other best friend, Aaron, wanted him to take her to homecoming as a friend. When we were 18, Colorado State wanted him on the ski team, despite the fact he'd only been skiing for a few years with hand-me-down equipment from my dad's cast-offs. It didn't matter because they loved him. Everyone loved him. Including me. I glanced across the top of my beer bottle at his beautiful fucking face. He was seriously model pretty even though his parents had been complete and total losers, unworthy of even a scrap of his attention, they'd gifted him with a square jaw, a cleft chin, and thick, strawberry blonde hair that never looked out of place. Despite starting off small, he was now several inches over six feet. He was also covered head to toe in freckles. Freckles I'd spent an embarrassing amount of my life counting and daydreaming about licking. Are you even listening? Parker asked. Mm-hmm. I wasn't. I was too busy feeling sorry for myself. I loved Erin, but she was getting everything I'd ever wanted tomorrow, and I wasn't sure how long I could keep it together before ugly crying, especially since Parker had just run off the one guaranteed distraction I'd had for the evening. All I needed to do was hold out until I could get to the cabin on Sunday. It was the perfect place to spend a week mourning what I was never going to have, so that by the time Parker and Aaron got back from their honeymoon, I'd be ready to pack up all my unrequited love and foolish pining once and for all. Parker and Aaron were a forever unit now. I was extraneous. So for my own sanity, I had to stop making my best friend the sun around which my entire life orbited, but first, I was going to wallow. I'd already arranged for grocery delivery, kick-ass Wi-Fi for movie marathons, and even a nice dinner at Tiller and Mikey's Lodge as soon as I'd finished crying. Why do you think Aaron was talking to Nolan about our vacation? Parker asked, reaching for a nacho from the giant tower on the plate between us. If he'd asked for a gourmet lemon peel cupcake, our waitress probably would have gone out of her way to make one for him. Do you really think she wanted to make a big group thing out of it? Typical. I think she was making conversation with a guest at her rehearsal dinner. You know, Aaron, she loves meeting new people and finding out every single thing about them. I'm sure that's all it was. I reached out and took a small piece off the edge of the stack and popped it in my mouth. Parker's eyebrows met in the middle. She's been acting weird lately. So have you, I said without thinking. I could tell right away from the surprised look on his face Parker was going to turn this into a whole thing by asking me to elaborate. I tried to stop him by holding my hand up. Don't. You can't just say that and not explain what you mean. He was stupidly cute when he pouted. I shrugged and picked off another piece of chip. I don't know. You just seem... squirrely. Are you nervous or something? That's not like you. You're the steadiest person I know. That and his firm heterosexuality, of course. He looked down at his beer bottle. Maybe. I mean, I love Erin. Obviously. She's great. I made a mental note to only accept marriage proposals from men who thought a little more of me than great.